Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So, what did I get done in the last week on this piece? Nothing. I did, straight after I finished filming, I finished those two little stems in the gold thread. I did that on camera and then I did those two. Then I literally put the piece down, walked away and it just got swooshed into the corner for the week and that was the end of that. So, I don't have a lot to show you. But what I thought I'd do today is I need to keep working these leaves. I, I just want to get a few more of them into position. So I thought that's what I'm going to do today. I feel like doing leaves. Now I've got a tiny little bit of green on that ribbon. I'm loving the way that ribbon worked up. Really pleased with that. But then it goes gold. So what I want to do is utilize that tiny little bit. So I need to find a little leaf, just a little one, that is tucked up in behind there. So I'm going to attempt to couch down this little guy here next. Sort of, it's very much in the background. That then will give me that little creamy gold section and then I'll go looking for somewhere to place that. Now remember I haven't made a decision on what I'm doing with the shadowy very pale washed out leaves over in the background. So I guess this little gold morsel that's about to come my way once I get this green little morsel stitched into position might just Help me make some decisions. I, I personally think it'll be too chunky. I think that that is very washed. And if I go too heavy on my um, embroidery, I believe that it'll become, yeah, it'll become too overpowering. So that's my thoughts, but you know, let's, let's experiment. I hadn't even thought of hunting out some lace and we make shadowy, lacy leaves in the background. I haven't yet done that, so maybe we have a little play with that. I was going to do the yellow flower, but I sort of felt like I needed to get this guy into position because... I can use this stitches for the yellow to help blend this leaf into the background. So that's why I'm sort of like I can stitch into the green and it will literally look like it's behind the yellow, but I need him down first. So that little orange flower that's peeking through there, he will be another example of he will stitch up over this green leaf and that'll push this little fellow back. You know what? I haven't stitched it down with the green thread that I did in the previous, so I might just, well, I've in, invisible stitched him down. So there you go, that's, that's done. <laughs> but I do like having that pop of seed stitch of green over it. So I might just finish what I'm doing here. Get that stitched down as if it's bending around behind. Behind that yellow rose. I'll just pinch that in a bit. You can really manipulate your ribbon or your fabric when you do little itty bitty stitches. There we go. It does peek up through the back of the iris there, but I'm not going to chase that line. I'm, I just think that's might stand out too much. So I'm just staying back a little bit and it disappears behind the iris. It's just a, a hint of it. Okay, so let's end that thread off. And before I forget, I just want to thread up 
the green and get some seed stitches up through. Put Reg over there because we don't need him. I just want to get this little guy onto a needle. Last time it disintegrated on me, it broke down. So I'm going to use a bigger needle with a bigger eye. It's obviously put a little bit too much pressure. Look at the knot I just did. That's ridiculous. That's better. So I just want to do a few little stitches through it. It gives it a nice dimpled. It's my tummy rumbling. I haven't had breakfast yet. I need to go buy groceries. There's just nothing in my fridge. It's just one of those jobs that I should have done earlier in the week, but I was like, nah, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Suddenly you get to the end of the week and it's like, oh, there's no food. What happened? <laughs> Did clean up a lot of leftovers, and, you know, scraps of things. There's a one meal left in the cereal or three slices of bread left and... You know, sometimes you just need that time to stop buying stuff for your fridge and eat what you've got. I do it in the pantry. I'll just say, right, nothing new for the pantry. We need to use what we've got. And you do get quite creative and it's quite a challenge when you're standing at your cupboard door and looking in there and going, well, we've got a tin of that, a tin of that and a tin of tuna. What can we do? It's like collaging a meal together. There you go. Excellent. So that little smidgen of a leaf is there. Now, let's have a look at this guy. I like how he's got that little bit of green on the bottom there. Should we bring him in here? That's so green. It's quite, I really like that green. I don't know. Should we do a leaf over here so it comes out from behind that yellow? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Do we want this gold in here? I don't think I do, guys. I don't think I do. It's just a tone that's not here, is it? It's like bringing a completely different... Yeah, no, I can't do it. I'm going to remove it because I want to do this leaf next. And I'm going to stitch it with a little bit of that gold at the base so it looks like it's part of that. Just tuck it in. I can hear my husband. He's just appeared from the burrow and is heading to the kitchen. I might use... I'll stick with the green thread. That's what I did in the previous video. And I might get a point happening there. Let me zoom in so you can see the detail. Maybe at the end when I add the final touches. Maybe I end up adding in some extra leaves that aren't actually printed on the fabric. And that little piece, you know, comes into play. I just don't know. I'll leave it in my little stash of goodies. But at the moment, I just can't. I, You know, one thing I love about doing pieces over a period of time is when you're doing them fast, you make decisions on the fly and you just go with it, which is great. 
But when you've got a piece that you're nibbling away at for some time, I love how they evolve into a direction you did not think you were heading. And I think it's a case of, you know, giving yourself time to have a good look and think. I know Seed Stitch does that for me. When I sit back and just Seed Stitch, it's mindless. So then I start focusing on, say, for example, those little orange flowers there and think, you know what, what would I use? Is it going to be textured beads, lace, you know? So having a three month window to actually stitch the piece, I'm actually quite surprised how the pieces are evolving. And I guess too, when you're out and about visiting um, like fabric shops or craft shops or floristries or even the $2 shops, the op shops, you see things and you're like, oh, that actually reminds me of my piece. Or sometimes it can be a random painting on a wall in the doctor's surgery, you know, stuff like that. And you're like, oh, look how they've done that leaf. So don't feel like you have to make all your decisions at once, especially with this particular project, if you are stitching your seasons. Or don't forget our Facebook site too. Details and the link is in the description below. So if you are stitching Stitch the Seasons, we'd love to see it. I meant to mention it in last week's video. Okay. There we go. Now, where did that leaf end? So I don't want to overpower the, the stem of the rose. It's sneaking up behind there. So we've got the bottom edge in position. So now we need to start bringing that back giving it a twizzle just to, you know, make it look like we know what we're doing. It's a lot of fabric to get into that point, so I'm going to twizzle it tight and use that stitch there. Gotcha. I might even continue it because I really like that pale green that's peeking through there so we're going to make the leaf oh I've just got a hot hot feeling I drank my coffee quite quickly and it's just hit my body <laughs> with a smack Okay, I'm going to now trim that. Didn't get as much of the pale green as I thought I would, but that's okay. That's a nice new leaf of a new colour. And this leaf is a little bit buried in, so it's nice and dark and moody for a shady spot within this cluster. Oh, okay. I remember the piece we did last, the spring. Yeah, the words were my Achilles heel. I just couldn't come up with the words that I wanted to put on my piece. Well, this time it's these shadowy washed leaves. I've got my words. I wrote them when I wrote the spring piece. They just came out of me at the same time. So I've got them in my diary. So I'm ready to stitch them whenever. My words, I think, will go along this bottom here. It's a bit of a plain spot, so I'm thinking that's where the script will go, or the text, my little poem. Okay, just grabbing that edge of that leaf, and I'm gonna pull, hopefully there's enough slack there. 
pull that up yep and just catch it down okay a couple little stitches through the center see I had even thought about doing a feather stitch or even a fly stitch in that shadowy area but it's the wrong shape it's these are wispy I know there's been quite a few suggestions so I am considering all of the ideas you guys are throwing up thank you very much I just can't decide I just don't want them to overpower and I have a feeling that if I make a decision now in what I'm going to do they'll end up being quite bold and I'll regret it so I want to get all the bold bits done and that's these feature leaves whoops and then you know see See how it goes from there. Okay. Love it, love it, love it. Mm. So let's let's do this guy at the top, that guy. Let's have a look at my and I've got a pale piece of ribbon next off so I'm going to tuck that to get that point stitch it into there lovely um, I might use reg this is quite a long reg and just general cotton this is a long long petal or leaf 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 so I think a bit of reg first. I really need to get into that seed stitch. I'm scooting along here with these leaves and exposing lots of little areas that need seed stitch. So I could have got a seed stitch needed in there. Maybe I'll get it done this week. I don't know. Lots of things on the go. Oh, reg, come on. We just need a knot, son. Sorry, concentrating. Okay. Now, I wanted to have a bit of a twisty point here. And I'll bring it down into the yellow flower a little bit so that I can stitch over it so it makes it look like that leaf is behind, behind the flower. And by using cotton this time, I can really anchor that. Oh, isn't it pretty? Gosh. Been so tempted to go to Steph Francis's website and buy some more threads. But if I can't even unravel and use the ones I've got why why buy more <laughs> oh they're just so pretty silly girl okay now I'm just looking for my outline I'm gonna pick a line here there and just start couching that down so it doesn't go past the painted watercolour edge. Imagine a big piece of this done. Like I, I think I bought a metre of this fabric. Got it in New Zealand, I believe, if that's right. I'm sure I mentioned that in the beginning of this video series. So I'm pretty sure it was. And... Um, Gosh, imagine a big panel done 
and mounted. There we go. So that's naturally, oh, isn't that so leaf-like? Now I've got this twist happening. How are we going to deal with that? I might even just tuck that under so that I get a nice point at the top of that leaf. And then I can trim that off and hide it back in on itself. It's a bit of a feature leaf this one so i'm going to go with the way that fabric was falling then and follow its lead and get a point up there instead of doing the the trim let's get a a point oh yeah i like that that is not going anywhere so now I'm going to trim that there, slide that in there. Oh, we are getting good at this. Just tooting my own horn here. You pick up tips, don't you, as you do things a couple times. You're like, oh, that's actually seated better. Now I need a bit of a sharp I haven't thought too much about these owl reg. See, the moment I lost my train of thought, reg nipped me. This blobs of paint where the artist has flicked. There's another one down here. See these? I haven't decided what I'm doing with them yet. Oh, it's two schools of thought. You leave them as they are, as a reminder of what the artist has done before you. That's the, the blotches of paint. Or you embroider them in with satin stitch or something along those lines or beads. Or I think it's going to be one of those things where I get to the end and then make my decision to see what sort of the piece needs. At one point I thought about buttons, but oh, I don't know. Floating buttons, blotches, it sort of didn't really. It was just one of those thoughts. So that's now in position really well. So what I'll do is thread up that vintage green variegated crochet cotton and just slide up through that leaf with a few little seed stitches just to add a little bit extra fancy detail. I was using it to secure the actual fabric down, but I've gone back to using Reginald and thin cotton. I sort of just feel like it's nice and secure because I've noticed that because this is vintage, like this could be, you know, 30 year old, it could be five year old and it's sat in the sun somewhere in a sewing room. So it's just a little bit weak. It's like that yellow, um, this guy, he's probably 50 year old and he's definitely fibrously weak. So I decided I just didn't want to rely on these old girls to hold the bits and pieces down. So I have picked up the cotton here and there and I guess got my basic stitching in place. At least I know it's solid. But it's nice to be able to use these old girls, even if they do start to break down and disintegrate. You know, there's some effect in that as well. There we go. Just dancing up that leaf with a few little stitches. It's subtle. I know it's there, but it looks like speckles. I think if you're painting 
with thread or fabric over a watercolour image, the more variegation you can get. You're sort of really mimicking what watercolour paints do. So you're really keeping your artist forefront in your design because you're using variegated elements. And adding fabrics that have shimmer, boy, they can really take a piece to a new level. Okay, that's really good. So I've got my little bit of green there. Yep. Okay, lovely. Can you believe July, oh, uh, July. Goodness me, January is marching away. Oh my goodness. There we go. Now, I wonder, do we do, maybe I'll do a few up here. Yeah. You'll be probably wondering, when is she going to get on to those little birds? I will, when I feel like doing a bird at the moment. I'm in the leaf, the leaf category. <laughs> it's whatever I feel like, whenever I feel like it. Where's Reginald gone? Reg, seriously. Oh, did anyone see where Reg went? Oh, trouble. Here he is. He's just sitting to the side, minding his own business. Okay, I'm just knotting Reg here. If you're wondering where she's gone, she's gone quiet. The girl never goes quiet. I'm going to do those these guys at the top next. Get that little raw edge in there, hidden a little. I might stitch. I tell you, if I ever saw this ribbon somewhere again, in my travels, travels, I would buy it again, or a, a like, like product. It is really pretty. If anyone knows where you've seen it for sale, let me know, because I'm really impressed with it. Okay, we're on our way now. Just got to hide that raw edge in there a little more. And then get back to getting our formal shape of... Come on, Reg. He's got attitude today. Laying, oh, what's going on here? I've got too much folded. There we go, that's better. Let's get our shape back. We're losing our direction here. Well, 
let's do the twist and then the flick back and see if we can get a nice point and the tuck under there we go get some well placed little stitches this little leaf is going to be behind the bird I believe it's gone right down to touch the tail I might snip that now I've got enough of it anchored to poke that in and start building a point of the leaf okay it's fiddly but it's, if you can hang in there and take your time you'll get it it's quite forgiving shiny fabric There we go, coming on the home stretch now. What's that little edge there from? Let's just snip that off. No, don't snip it, girl. Tuck it underneath. I think it's just from the top. There you go. There you go. Concentrating. There we go. So my leaf is secure. So I can knot that off and then, like before, come through with the decorative seed stitch and um, stitch it down. I had some on the needle, didn't I? Yep. Just a few just to tie it all together with a couple little speckly stitches. And you can also then use it to manipulate it a little bit more if you feel you need to through the center. Yeah, love it. I still might come through and do some stitch down those leaves, but I don't know. There's so much happening with them with the shiny fabric that I just don't think it's necessary. I think there's enough movement and shimmer. And so I'm wondering now that I'm at the top of a leaf that actually has the, a stem, I might have a play with a stem stitch up into there. Attaching it to the main part of the branch. This is very fine thread, but it might be just enough to give the feeling that the leaf is attached to the a bigger leaf. With this little stem stitch admittedly some of this will be covered because we're now off the piece i'm yet to have a think about what is going to be the connecting i might just put a stitch down into that leaf so if i come through it's there yep Another knot. This is a little bit slap happy. Oh, seriously. Okay. The amount of time wasted threading needles, but it's a necessary thing. 
It's like, I guess your brain is going, oh, I'll do that, I'll do that. I just want to trim a couple little raw edges that are peeking out there or poke them in. Yeah, that's better. Just needed something to tuck those bits in. All right. Let's get another one done. Do we do it in that pile? I know I've been humming and harring about this pile. Oh, I can't stop thinking about it. Would be maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna do it, guys. That's it. Just it's a scrap and it's sitting around and I it's I'm just I'm going to do it. It'll add interest. It'll look like an artist has done this if I muck around with colours a little bit braver. If I'm a little bit braver. And it's only thread and fabric. So we can pull it out, can't we? I just spotted a bead lying on my desk. Look at that. No, it's too blue. Stop it. Focus, girl. So... I think we will do the tuck it under routine to get us that point. It's only a little, little leaf, so I can't be too, can't go too wrong, can we? Let's get down here on that point. Might just do a couple little stitches to make sure I'm anchored. And then when I grab that fabric, I know I can give it a good little tug there and it's not going to come out. There we go. We're in. We're doing it. Now Reginald's dropped his thread. Come on, Reg. Seriously, son. Just participate properly. This side stitched. I take my glasses off. I've got really nervous. I don't know why. Just got nervous all of a sudden. Let's tuck that under there. Let's now bring you back in on yourself. Oh. We're doing it. We're putting that little gold bit in. I'm being real brave putting it at the top of the piece with a portion of it will probably be covered by some form of connecting something or other to the piece above. And then there's buttons. So I'm being real brave, aren't I? I do like it. I like it a lot. Oh, come on. Am I even on shot? Oh, sorry, guys. I'm getting excited. I'm bouncing off my chair here. Could be the coffee I consumed. Now, bring it back over to that edge because I'm losing my shape of my leaf so that's all anchored now I can twist it back on itself there we go tucking it in as we go to get that nice sharp I'm going to put a little stitch further down to hold it and then work back up to that corner so that I get that nice point. And because I put that little stitch there before from the stem stitch, it's waiting for me there. It's worked out really well because now I can just focus on bringing this piece down and into position.
Um, do we regret it using the gold? Don't think so. I think it'll be such a minute detail in the whole scheme of things that I will never think of it again. <laughs> We just got to tidy up our end here, tucking all those raw edges down. In you go, in you go. That's it, beautiful. It's fiddly, but rewarding. I think you've got to have yourself in quite a calm state to do couching. If you're in a bit of a racy mood with coffee going through your veins, you probably should do something a little less fiddly. But that's going to come in nicely there. Just getting these little ends. It's only a little leaf, so I've got all these bits sticking out at me. I hope I'm in camera, I'm concentrating so much. There we go. I think I've got it now. I'm pleased I decided to flip over to just sewing machine cotton and a Reggie needle. Nice, thin, sharp, easy to pull through to get little delicate stitches down than using that vintage cotton because the vintage cotton, I think, would have driven me a little bit bonkers try. Ow, Reg! Ow, ow, ow! Oh, oh, you little coot. Why does he do that? Why, why does he just suddenly go nip? There you go. Happy with that? Happy with that. That is not coming out. Oh, it works. I think because that green tip is on the end of that little piece of fabric, I just know it would have rattled around in my scrap bucket here of threads and things and been lost forever. And I just couldn't have that. I had to use it. So let's put Reg up here out of the way. Let's grab our vintage green. There should be just enough left on this needle just to pop a few little decorative seed stitches through the center there, just as a minute detail that no one will ever notice, but you know, it's there. I know it's there. Just a little stitch, little speckles. See, there's a blue blotch of paint right there. How are we gonna deal with them? Do I just seed stitched over and let them blend? They'll disappear if I do that. They got very little edges because it's like a you do a blotch of paint and you blow through a straw on it and it gives you those little spidery edges. That's hard to stitch and I think it would look a little odd. I have a feeling they're just going to be washed into the background. Okay, that's another leaf done. How exciting. I have a gold leaf. Now I'm going to want to do more gold leaves to balance out that gold leaf. There we go. Let me put my glasses back on. And those detail, I needed them off. Oh, yeah. I might wait on those because if there's some... No, I'm going to do it I was going to wait because I don't didn't want to waste um, waste this product on it if it's going to be covered but they'll definitely still be out there so I need to I need to get them in so let's just do it if they get covered they get covered like don't overthink it girl just to stitch it so how are we going for time? 45 minutes done already. Seriously. 
goodness me. This goes to show how many hours you put into your stitching, doesn't it? So I've got another gold bit hanging around now. Goodness. So I'm just going to twist that. Pop it into there. Stitch it down. Can I get this one done in 15 minutes? I'd say so. I promised to do some seed stitch. Well, maybe my promises aren't worth much, so <laughs> we'll see. See how the week goes. Okay, are we anchored? I really want to put my nose in some of my um, Indian trims because I just feel like this piece is very glamorous and I could probably sneak a sari silk trim in at the top to connect to the piece above. But I'm just waiting. I'm not going near that bucket of trims yet until I get more of a story happening here because like those background leaves I could easily overpower my piece because I've got carried away with the trims or carried away with the stitches for those shadowy leaves so I think I'm on the right track of doing all the bold the bold stuff and then having a look at it on the whole and deciding what you know what should be done now I'm going to try and get a point so I've got a tuck twist fold back on myself Come on, Reg, we need you to give me a nice point now, as good as you can when you're couching on a thick, thick, um, ruchy fabric. That, you know, it's not as pointy as the artist got with the, they, you know, feather out that paint. I was never going to achieve that, but we'll see. Snip it, get rid of a bit of that bulk, and then use Mr. Reginald here to tuck. Tuck. Twist that under just a little bit more and stitch. There we go. So it's definitely not as pointy as say far, um, fern palm frond would be, but it's abstract, all right. If I'd used embroidery cotton, definitely would have been able to get an, a lovely point, but yeah, this is more fun. And just narrow it up a little bit, I think that's what I'll do. You just start stitching on that edge. I've snuck into the center of the leaf, so I'm losing control of the shape because my stitches now I'm right, I'm back on that edge. There we go. And like I said, that might get three quarters covered by whatever P ow! Reg. <laughs> See, it's lack of concentration. It's not Reg's fault. No, it is. You know the saying, you never blame your tools? I do. Because Reg has a name, we can blame him. There we go. We're home. Let's just get that bit stitched down there. I'll just stay out of that wadding in case I do want to trim... Turn it back. I don't think so, but 
couple extra stitches can't hurt. All right. So I will do the same. on the next leaf and even the one that's under the purple flower I'll show you see that guy there I'm gonna do him as well and him I'll do them off camera well, I've come to the end of my my hour very much close to it anyway yeah I'll put those two in and then the purple flower and the yellow to a degree if he gets used can just sit on top of it so they're in in behind so how many we got what 10 minutes left i'll keep going until we get to the hour and then i'll uh, toddle off and you guys can be left alone Okay. All right, once again, squish it all up. Try and get a little bit of a point. Not that it matters too much there because it's the edge. There we go. Now it's about getting that twist. It's only a little leaf, this one. I might do the old trim this time because it's so fine to get to get that point and tuck it all in it'll become quite fat so I'm going to do the cut and stitch stitch it down and do a little twist get us as pointy as we possibly can I might just jump to the end there and put a stitch in there to hold it It's a case of bringing your stitch, your needle up at the very end, but then bringing it across to you. That helps bring that point in. It's tricky when you've got fraying, soft, flowy, silky fabrics. But, you know, it's abstract, all right? There we go. Now I can start coming up the opposite side of that leaf. I feel like I've got a groove on now. It only took me an hour. There we go. Red Joni bit me five times, so that's not a bad video. There's another little leaf coming in there. Trim that off. I just end. I haven't done my vintage seed stitch through a few of those, so I'll do that off camera. Come on. Random knot. Don't be like that. There we go. Right. Now, how are we going for time? Have we got time? Spectacles back on. Yep. See, I'm getting quicker, aren't I? I might do this little guy next. Yep. That tangerine green is such a pretty colour. It's like yellow. It's just one of those tones that when you add it into your work, you get light. Oh, 
Reg doesn't have a big enough knot. See, now I'm rushing because I thought I looked at the time. Let's start that again. Start that again. Don't pull the thread so hard, girl. Get your anchor stitches down and then it'll figure. Now we're covering that purple flower because we'll catch him another day and get him back into position. Now stay to the perimeter of the painted flower below so that way I keep my shape. Otherwise, I'll end up with weird shaped palm fronds. Give it a twist so we're starting to create that point like we've been here before. There we go. Look at that green. Wow. Very pretty. Give it a twist now, it wants to twist that way, so we will follow its lead. quite concentrating guys just want to catch the other side admittedly most of that's going to disappear underneath that purple flower so let's just get the other side stitched down and that orange flower maybe if they don't get covered by some form of connecting fabric trim whatever that's going to connect it to a spring. So if you are joining me for the first time and you've made it to the end of a video, it's usually the diehards that hang with me to the end. <laughs> the newbies are like, oh, that's enough. I'm going to extend it a little bit. I just want that tangerine green to be there and not lost it's so pretty on hindsight that one there would have been better to have this color being that it's fast becoming my favorite tone of green so I'm going to trim it so that I get a point and then using needle and thread tuck and stitch and to get that little point happening so yeah, if you're new to the channel, this piece is going to be attached to the bottom of a piece that I did for spring. Three months of a season, I've stitched away just fiddling around on a piece of beautiful fabric that caught my eye, made me think of the season. And now I'm just painting it in threads and fabrics. So that's what I mean by the top edge here could be anything connecting it to the previous project, which is spring. But you probably aren't new if you've got to the end of the video because you've probably lost interest and gone, oh my gosh, too much and I'm out of here. <laughs> so it's just you folk that are hanging out with me now interesting the analyticals of how many people get to the end of the videos or where they give up <laughs> it's quite funny but there's all different types of stitches out there isn't there there's those of us old war horses that just plug along the more stitching we can do the happier we are so hours go by so we're looking for youtubers with hour long videos just to hang out with that's my category there we go. I feel like we have conquered 
just putting my spectacles back on. We, I won't trim that because that, I know that'll disappear. We have conquered that up the top and I have another little morsel. There we go. Let me zoom up a little bit, guys, so you can get more of an overall view. I just need to take my vintage thread, um, which I'll do off camera now. We've hit the golden hour. I will just do some random little seed stitches through those just to give that little dimpled look that I've got on the others. And there we go. I'm going to call it a day. Will I do any more of that style of leaf? I don't know. I think I'm going to settle into some seed stitch now for the coming week. And that'll give me time to have a, a bit of a look through the piece and work out if I want more texture or, yeah, I don't know. I need time to percolate. And have a little think. So I don't know what I'll do next in the next video. So you guys have a great day. I hope you have something exciting planned. If you don't, well, you'll probably be stitching and that is exciting. I will finish this little bit of vintage seed stitch. I said I was doing it off camera, but I haven't stopped. I haven't turned off the camera. I'm just keep going. I have really good internet at the moment. So I'm finding my videos at length videos, you know, when they go an hour or 10 minutes or so, they upload just as easy as the 30 minute videos. So I'm pretty happy. I feel like I can drift past the hour. I know you guys will be thinking, oh my goodness, that girl. Yeah, I feel like I can drift a little bit past the hour and I'm not watching a video just churn as it slowly uploads. Okay, just continuing with my little seed stitches. Taking my glasses off again. Just a couple. Like you can barely see them. I think I'm doing it for my own benefit more than anything. Does it benefit the piece? Probably not. It's nice to use this old thread. There we go. Done. Beautiful. All right, guys, I am going to go now. I feel like we've accomplished something. Just end that off. All right. Thanks for joining me. Like I said, have a lovely day, evening, whatever that may be. And I will catch you all in the next video. Bye for now.